Good morning, everybody. So again, we are with the same chapter. That is the first chapter, crop production and management. First of all, we are going to have a recap what you have done previously. Okay, now first thing is crop. Now, what do you mean by crop? Again, the crop is growing the same kind of plant on the same field on a large scale. That is called crop. Now, what do you mean by different type of crops? Different type of crops. We have kharif and rabi crops, but before that, why we are growing different type of different kind of crops in different states because of the climatic condition, types of soil, and the atmosphere. We have already divided the crops according to season. That is kharif and rabi crops. Kharif crops are the crops which are grown in the rainy season, like paddy, rice, groundnut, and the rabi crops are the crops. Which are grown in the winter season, like cotton, maize. Why we cannot grow the kharif crop in the rabi season? We can grow, but the yield will be not that much good. But we cannot grow the rabi crop in the kharif season because if you are growing the rabi crops in the kharif season, then the crop may get damaged because of heavy rainfall. Okay. So now the agriculture. Now the agriculture is one of the branch of science which deals with the cultivation of crops and rearing of animals which are very helpful to us. Now, in today's session, we are going to start with the nutrient medium. Nutrient medium means what? The medium from which we are getting the nutrients to the plants and that medium is called soil. Normally, all the nutrients which are required for the growth and development of plant is soil. Now, before Proceeding further, we should know the tools, the agriculture implements or the agriculture tools. Why the tools are required? Just like an Indian soldiers. Without weapons, our Indian soldiers can win the war at the border or win the war at the battlefield? No. Similarly like that, farmers also need the tools, the agriculture tools, which are required by the farmer in growing the crops. Without tools, farmer cannot grow the crops, the farmer cannot do the several type of practices in the field. Now the, what are the basic tools which are required by the farmer? They are plow, hoe and cultivator. Normally all these tools are required by the farmer for plowing, tilling, for adding manure, for removing weeds and etc. Normally plow, plow means plow is a made up of wood. Normally in Hindi it is called hull. Hal Jotna, right? I think you have already heard about that. Hal Jotna, right? So, plow, plow contains a wooden beam which is placed on a bull's neck and the bull used to pull the plow and with the help of handle, the farmer used to change the direction of plow. Similarly, a hoe. Hoe is having a grip, rod and beam which is already mentioned in the figure. Now, those type of question I can ask for one mark for drawing the diagram of flow, O and cultivator. If all the three diagrams asked, it will be of three marks and one diagram is of one mark. And even I can also ask that you have to label the diagram. Okay, I will simply give you the blank diagram with the labeling left. You have to label the diagram. Now the cultivator. Cultivator is basically, it is a tractor driven cultivator which is used by the farmer to save time and labor. Okay, if you have enough money, okay, you can buy the cultivator and it can be driven by a tractor to save the time and labor. Now, after having the tool, the farmer has to follow several practices in the field to grow the crop. We have a list of practices as you can see on the board. The first practice is the preparation of soil. If I give you a barrel land, then you have to prepare the soil for sowing the seeds. And after sowing the seeds, you have to add the manure and fertilizer. After adding manure and fertilizer, the irrigation is done. And after irrigation, after irrigation, when the seeds are converted into seedlings, some unwanted plants grow with the seedlings that are called weeds. And after growing a healthy crop, after having a healthy crop, we have to harvest it. After harvesting, 
we have to dry the seeds and we have to store it. That is called storage. Now, step by step, we are going to have one point. Now, the first point in the agriculture practices that is called preparation of soil. The preparation of soil includes three steps. One is plowing, leveling and manuring. Plowing means what? Plowing means turning the soil or digging the soil. Plowing is also called tilling the soil. Plowing means mitti ko khodna. Okay. Plowing means mitti ko khodna. Normally, without plowing, we cannot sow the seeds. Sometimes it's happened when the land surface is too tough. So it is quite hard to plow with the help of tool. Now, what are the tools we are having? We have the plow, we have the hoe, we have the cultivator. If the land is too tough and it is not plowed from last one year, so sometimes we have to wet the land, we have to irrigate the land first, then we can do the plowing. Now, what are the advantages of plowing? After having the plowing means the loosening of soil or the tilling of soils. The roots can easily penetrate. The roots can easily penetrate deeper into the soil, so the roots can breathe. The loosening of soil allows the air to reach the roots of plant. Yes or no? And through which the roots can breathe. And after that, the second advantage: if we have the loosened soil, then the worms and microbes will be growing easier which are the good friends of farmer. Why they are called the good friends of farmer? Because worms and microbes decomposes all the dead plants and animals and increase the fertility of soil, which is good for crops. Third point, loose soil, okay, increase the worms and microbes. And because of worms and microbes, humus is added to the soil, which is good for soil. Humus is very necessary, which makes the water to hold in the loose soil. Because of humors, water retention capacity of the soil increases. Now the fourth advantage, while loosening the soil through plowing, we are uprooting the previous plant roots, which are inside the soil, which we cannot see. So by uprooting them, again, those roots will be decomposed by the worms and microbes and our soil will become more fertile. Our soil will become more fertile. While plowing the soil, okay, the nutrients which are inside the soil will come on the top of the land. So, the plants will be using those nutrients from the soil which are inside the soil. After the plowing of soil or after the tilling of soil, we have to level the plow land. We have to level the loose soil. Why it is? It is very important so that the level land have the many advantages. We can use the wooden leveler to level the plow land. Now what are the advantages what we are getting after the leveling of a plow land? First advantage is the prevention of soil erosion. That the top layer of soil will not be carried away by the wind. That is called soil erosion. The second advantage after Having the level plow land, there will be a uniform distribution of water throughout the field, which will maintain the moisture in the field, which will help the plant to grow. And after the leveling, the manuring is done. Normally, manuring is done in two cases. Sometimes it is done before the plowing the land, so that the manure should be properly mixed with the soil and it will help the seed to grow and all the nutrients that will be getting from the manure. And sometimes it is done before sowing the seeds. Yes. Why? Because the nutrients which are present in the manure will be get by the seeds and it will help the seeds to grow in a proper seedling than in a proper plant. Now the second step is the sowing of seed. Now but before going toward the sowing of seeds, we should have a good selection of seeds. Now. Why we should have a good selection of seed? Normally, to have a good yield of crops. To have a good crops, we should have a good seeds. Now, for the selection of seeds, normally what the farmers do? The farmers put all the seeds in a bucket of water. 
the seeds which settle down at the bottom of the bucket are called healthy seeds. Why? Because they are rich in nutrients. They are heavy in weight because they are rich in nutrients. And the seeds which float on the surface of water are called the damaged seeds because they are hollow from inside. So means they are called the damaged seeds which are not good for our field, which are not good for our crops. Now, today here we are going to end the session and tomorrow we are going to continue with the point C, point B that is sowing of seeds. Again sowing of seeds contain two methods. One is broadcast method and the second is seed drill method.